Cool. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and welcome to our discussion on funding opportunities for communities on the wrong side of the digital divide. Um, my name again is Ryan Johnston, the Federal Policy Council here at NCC. And one of the big threads that a lot of speakers today have, have tugged on is how funding is one of the largest barriers to undertaking a new broadband project. Uh, we've also heard a lot about how many communities are unsure of where funding exists, um, where they can go to access that, and how state and federal programs are often lacking the necessary outreach and support, which makes applying for and receiving these funds easier for localities. Um, as more of federal funding is becoming available and new programs are being thought up in Washington, uh, community level knowledge about how to access these funding opportunities is absolutely essential. Um, today, we're going to discuss a little bit how local officials can more easily find uh, new sources of federal funding um, and how they can um, work together more with the broadband leaders in their states uh, that might be able to help them start down the path to connecting their communities. Uh, thankfully, I don't have to explain any of this. And I am joined today by an, a gifted expert on federal funding, Gilbert Resendez, the broadband program specialist with the National Telecommunications Information Administration. Uh, specifically, Mr. Resendez works with Broadband USA, a program established by NTIA to work with state, local, and tribal governments, industry, nonprofits that really promotes planning and funding efforts uh, through solution neutral guides and resources. Uh, specifically, Mr. Resendez works on the broadband infrastructure team coordinating partnerships and outreach with state and local governments on broadband programs and policy issues. Um, so for the purposes of today's discussion, we'll be taking questions throughout the presentation. So please don't hesitate to drop anything into the chat. And we'll also have a few minutes at the end uh, to address questions as well. So with that, Gilbert, it's absolutely wonderful to have you here today. Uh, thank you for discussing this incredibly complex topic with us and I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Ryan. I appreciate the invitation uh, from you in Next Century Cities. Um, before we get started, I'm dropping in the chat our federal funding guide. I have a slide to talk about it. I'm only talking about five federal programs um, at a pretty high level, but there are a number of different federal programs across the government that either fund broadband or broadband is an eligible expense, so I wanted to make sure that folks have that as a resource. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and get started with my slides. Uh, like Ryan said, my name is Gilbert Resendez. I've been with NTIA two years tomorrow. Um, and I work with our state and local governments. Um, I'm here talking to you a little bit about funding. So first I wanna give an, a kind of a brief overview of what NTIA is um, and our mission within the federal government and Department of Commerce. Like uh, Ryan gave a pretty good overview. Uh, we sit inside of the Department of Commerce, NTIA, the National Telecommunications and Information Administration. We are a telecommunications and information policy bureau of the Commerce Department. Um, and specifically, we support the, the Biden administration and, its, and the White House on its broadband and telecommunications policy goals to ensure that uh, broadband infrastructure is uh, delivered to the communities with greatest need. And so we do that uh, by supporting state initiatives, working with our sister federal agencies, um, and, and just coordinating efforts across the federal government. Specifically, we, with the Broadband USA program, focus on community outcomes, um, and we think that's really important. We do this through partnerships, technical assistance, uh, and then pro products and events that we produce. So we facilitate what's called our State Broadband Leaders Network and Digital Inclusion Leaders Network. Um, we clarify and communicate policy to our stakeholders, work with tribal governments, work to improve coordination across all levels of government. Uh, support and advise communities as they're evaluating maybe what sort of business models or technology can be used to deliver broadband um, or digital inclusion programs in their communities. And then like Ryan mentioned, we, pu we publish solution neutral guides. Um, we produce monthly webinars, although lately with our, the amount of grant money that we've been uh, needing to push out the door, it's been a little bit more frequent than monthly, about weekly or twice weekly. Uh, and then we convene stakeholders in various forums and, and come to the community to speak at events like uh, Think Century Cities or many of our other partners that we work with that I'm sure you've heard of. So first, I want to talk about uh, our NTIA grants that we have um, with us. So these grants were authorized by the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 21. Uh, that act gave us three new grant programs. Those are in order that I'll try to speak to them. The Broadband Infrastructure Deployment Program, 
the Connecting Minority Communities Pilot Program, and then our Tribal Connectivity Grant Program. And those are uh, a $288 million program, a $268 million program, and a $980 million program, respectively. Um, in the slides, I've linked to the notice of funding opportunities. I believe Next Century Cities has them and can distribute them. And then for the CMC pilot program, I've linked the final rule, uh, the NOFO for that is pending, but we'll talk about that a little bit further. So like I said, uh, the first program I wanted to talk a little bit about was our broadband infrastructure program. That is a $288 million program. Uh, the purpose of that funding is to pay for covered broadband projects. It goes to covered partnerships, and we are accepting applications now through August 17th. So if, if anyone in your community is interested in applying, um, please uh, apply by August 17th. Um, work with your states, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, to see what programs they may have been uh, also working on just so no one steps on toes. Um, there's a few definitions I wanted to point out uh, that I mentioned. The first is what is a covered partnership? Uh, the act, this Consolidated Appropriations Act defines that as a partnership between a state or a political subdivision of a state or one or more political subdivision of a state and a provider of fixed broadband service. Uh, a common question that I've gotten is, is, say, a municipal provider in and of itself a covered partnership? And the way that we've interpreted that is no, because it's pretty clear that the intent of the statute was that a covered partnership would have two entities. So it's conceivable where it could be one or the other, depending on what the state laws are um, and how, it how a state defines what a uh, political subdivision is, excuse me, but we only need two entities in that application. The next is what is qualifying broadband service, and that is a broadband service, a fixed broadband service that it can provide speed of not less than 25 megabits per second in the downstream, and not less than 20 megabit, or excuse me, three megabits per second uh, in the up direction. And we've also defined latency in our FAQs, and I put it here on the slides, which you can all access. The last is what is underserved, and that would be a household or business lacking access to qualifying broadband service, which we defined in the last slide, and that no provider has been selected to provide or to, yes, to provide service or is otherwise receiving federal funding uh, or state funding subject to enforceable build out. And that subject to enforceable build out piece is a very, very uh, important piece of that legislation. Uh, and our notice of funding opportunities to keep in, uh, in the back of your minds as you're working on these applications. And then uh, a little bit on the eligibility of this program before I transition. Like I said, this is for covered partnerships for a covered broadband project. Um, applications need to describe both that the covered project, what is the, the covered project that you're seeking funding for as well as who is in that partnership, excuse me. Uh, as well as describing the proposed fund, uh, service area and any other state or federal support that's being received. Each covered partnership can only submit one grant application. A covered partnership can have one or more fixed broadband provider and a fixed broadband provider can be a part of multiple covered partnerships. Next, I wanna to transition to our Connecting Minority Communities Pilot Program. Like I said at the top, this is a $268 million program. Uh, it, the res eligible recipients for this program are historically black colleges and universities, tribal colleges and universities, and minor or minority serving institutions. Uh, there are many different types of minority serving institutions. We have some resources on our website, as is the US Department of Education. So I would refer there um, since there are many different types. And I didn't have enough space to list them all. Uh, we also uh, allow co consortiums that are led by one of those types of institutions of higher education to apply with a minority business enterprise or a tax exempt 501c3 organization. These funds can be used to purchase broadband internet uh, access service or for any eligible equipment or to hire and train personnel, uh, tech information technology personnel in order to deliver um, remote learning or instruction to students uh, to operate that minority business enterprise or to operate that tax exempt 501c3. 
And we, like I said, we have published the final rule for that program. That information's on our website. We have not published the notice of funding opportunity yet. And we anticipate po um, posting that around mid-August. It's currently working its way through the clearance process. Uh, but once that's posted, that'll open up the application period for that grant. Two things that I want to make sure that uh, you all take away from this uh, slide on program requirements is that this grant has a two-year period of performance, as well as no matching requirement for the CMC pilot program. Uh, that's really important to keep in mind. Additionally, the legislation, the Consolidated Appropriations Act, calls out a 40% earmark uh, that funds will be made to uh, HBCUs, as well as 20% of all grant funds from this pot of money will be used uh, to award eligible recipients uh, to provide broadband access or devices or equipment to students in need. In order to help our applicants, since I know this legislation has a lot of different things for uh, eligibility, uh, we created a community anchor dashboard. So you can go visit your state uh, and sit, filter by type of minority institution, whether it's an HBCU, a tribal college and university, Hispanic serving institution, uh, or one of the many other different types of minority serving institutions and see what eligible uh, institutions may be in your communities, uh, as well as the um, eligible census blocks for service if, if, it can, if an anchor institution would like to also provide service or uh, work in, in those areas. And then the last NTIA program I would like to briefly discuss is our Tribal Broadband Connectivity Program. This is our largest of the three, it's $980 million. This is for tribal governments, tribal colleges and universities, the Department of Hawaiian Homelands on behalf of Native Hawaiian communities, uh, Native, Hawaiian, uh, Native Alaska corporations, as well as other uh, various types of tribal entities. This fund is to be used for the deployment or and adoption of broadband service on tribal land and project, projects that will promote broadband access and adoption in order to address um, remote learning, telehealth, telework needs in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Our deadline for submission on this application is September 1st, and this is a very firm deadline uh, that we can't move. I know we've gotten a lot of questions if there is some wiggle room there and there isn't. Um, and then again, uh, the eligible entities uh, to iterate are, are those tribal organizations. Um, so if you know of any tribal organizations in your communities, um, please, please promote this opportunity with them or around your communities. It's a, it's a really great opportunity for you to like all tribal organizations to have the option to uh, take advantage of. And then the last NTIA thing before I'll take a brief pause is we have a call for merit reviewers. Uh, we're seeking individuals with expertise in broadband, digital inclusion programs, infrastructure deployment, um, program specific to minority serving institutions to serve as merit reviewers for all three of our programs. So if you're interested in applying, I really encourage you to apply. In order to apply, you just need to send an email to grantreviewer at ntia.gov with the information uh, on the screen uh, in your resume and someone will get back to you with what the next steps will be um, as well as what, what the time commitment will be. That's also the email you can send questions to regarding being a merit reviewer. We have worked with our conflicts attorneys also to mitigate any conflicts of interest. So if you're interested, if you're a city leader and you're saying, hey, I'm interested in applying for a program, but I also think this is a cool opportunity, uh, we have worked out ways where you can do both. Um, so just if you have any questions about what that looks like, please email grant reviewer at ntia.gov. Right there, I'll pause and check with Brian to see if there are any questions before I keep moving on. Um, the only question that we've had so far is um, whether or not we'll be able to distribute these slides. Um, so yep. yeah, I think we'll be able to, so absolutely. Um, yep. but, Very distributable. Perfect. Um, other than that, no questions yet. Awesome. Um, so the next setup, I have two other funds I wanted to talk about before talking about some of the resources that we have at NTIA as you plan um, broadband or digital inclusion projects in your communities. And those funds come from the U.S. Department of the Treasury. Uh, so these funds were appropriate or authorized under the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. 
they are the state and local fiscal recovery fund and the capital projects fund. So together, state and local funds, uh, that fund totals about $350 billion. And one of the many eligible uses there is broadband. Uh, and I'm sure as many people have heard, the capital projects fund is a $10 billion fund um, for states, territories, and tribal governments to carry out capital projects that directly enable uh, remote work, education, health monitoring, um, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time on two of this, on the state and local fiscal recovery fund, um, since one it specifically has a local call out and two, there are a few different places where it shows that broadband or digital inclusion is an eligible expense, just to make sure folks are have that on their radar. So the first is broadband infrastructure is specifically called out um, in the American Rescue Plan Act uh, for state and local governments to make necessary investment in broadband infrastructure. Um, there's a lot of other information. If you have questions on you know, uh, speed, uh, speeds that need to be met for technology, uh, I would encourage you to visit the US Treasury Department's website because there's more information on that there. The other section is in the assistance to household section of the American Rescue Plan Act under the state and local fiscal recovery funds. It does state that assistance to households um, facing negative economic impacts due to COVID-19 can include uh, internet access or digital literacy assistance. Um, so just want to make sure that folks are aware of that. I know there are a number of different uses that these funds can be used for. Um, but I just want to make sure that uh, to provide some clarity that that is an eligible use for, for local governments. And then last, I know um, the Treasury Department issued an FAQ um, on their website. If you have any other questions, I'd encourage you to consult there. There's also an email address um, on the Treasury website if you have any further questions specifically about the state and local fiscal recovery funds and their use for broadband or digital literacy assistance. And finally, I wanted to close with some of our broadband planning resources. Um, the first is our fund search or our federal funding guide. Um, I put the link in the chat so if folks want to take a look at that. Like I said, these are just five programs um, that I briefly touched on all of them that can be used for broadband or digital literary assistance, but there's a number of others where broadband or digital inclusion is an eligible expense um, or it directly funds those programs. For example, Reconnect, USDA's Reconnect program. Um, with this, our sponge search tool, you can filter by use, um, the agency or department that you would like to, to look at. We update this website, uh, this tool annually, um, trying to tie it into the, the start of the fiscal year. We just updated um, this tool. So it's, everything on there is very current. And I believe that the information is also downloadable. And if not, then that feature is coming very, very soon. We just made a lot of updates to our website. Um, so some features are coming. The next is our Indicators of Broadband Need Map. This is a new publicly available digital map that launched about, I believe, two or three weeks ago. So it's still very, very new. It aggregates data at the county census track and census block level, depending on where the data is available. And that data comes from Census, the FCC, MLAB, Google, and Microsoft. Um, so it's a great way to get a sense of, as you layer data, in this public tool um, where the needs are, what the needs may be in a community. The next tool uh, or resource that I have on our website is our state page, our state, uh, which has a lot of information on our state broadband leaders network. So we have contacts at the state level for every state, the District of Columbia and all of our territories. Um, so we, work very closely with them. We convene our state broadband leaders once a month and then twice a year in person. Um, the once a month meetings are virtual and as of the last 18 months, even the quote in-person ones were virtual, um, but we do maintain a lot of uh, good information on what states are doing, including if your state has a broadband program, if there's state level funds. If anyone has any questions or if you'd like to be put in contact with your state leader, please send me an email and I'll be sure to put my email in this chat um, before I leave and I'm happy to connect you with your state broadband leader. And then the last resource that I wanted to highlight on our website is our digital inclusion resources page. 
and this includes uh, information on digital inclusion resources at the state and local level um, across the country. I know that there are a number of other digital inclusion resources, including nonprofits or universities um, that you can take advantage of. This only includes government resources, uh, but it's a great starting point. Um, with that, that's everything I have for now. I don't know if there's any other questions, Ryan. Absolutely. So we've gotten one question um, from uh, Mr. Frank Jones. Uh, he highlighted that on uh, the last chart that you had that you showed um, that one of the tools that you looked at were census tract data for blood band deployment. Mm -hmm. um, and the concern is that a lot of the time when we look at that data, it's not very accurate. Um, how is NTIA addressing that issue? Yeah, are you speaking specifically to Form 477? Um, I would believe so, yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, this is one of the many tools that we have, and you can layer on a number of different layers to get a sense of um, what may be going on beyond the FCC data. Like I said, it, it contains uh, some census tract data um, from UCLA MLAB. Um, so there is, it's more of a tool to help guide the start process uh, as a starting process. If you have any other questions on methodology, I'm happy to put you in contact with our um, MAPI team who can provide you a much, much deeper answer than I could on, on MAPI methodology. Okay. Um, and one of the things that we've heard a lot uh, about today is how communities can kind of start planning um, to look for these, these funding opportunities. When a community is, is in the process of doing their broadband plans or doing their digital equity plans, um, what, are there any things that they should specifically include or be focusing on uh, that might help them be able to, to apply for these, these funding opportunities uh, a little bit more easily? Yeah, so the question is what, what can communities be doing to begin like their planning process to apply for these funds? Right. Yeah, I think making, um, you know, starting an inventory of what resources do you have, whether it's human or community partners, um, what can you bring to the table as a starting point is always a great um, uh, place to start. I know a lot of people, if they're starting out, they may think, oh, I don't have anything. But you could have like you know, a partnership with a library um, that can provide really valuable um, education or community outreach. Um, so looking at those sort of like maybe non-technical uh, inventory, I think is a great way to see what partners can you tap into um, in order to build like, um, a really strong application or a strong plan moving forward of who you can tap into. Um, and I guess, how can the, how can communities, I guess, work more closely with the NTIA, um, either through hosting kind of program roadshows, town halls? Um, is there a way to increase community engagement from the community side if they're interested in becoming more proactive? Um, is there a way for them yeah. to engage with you? Yeah, so we're, we're always happy uh, to hear from the community and see what where areas are for us to work together. Um, our contact information is on the screen. Uh, so if you have any questions about working with us, please send us an email at broadbeamusa at ntia.doc.gov. And we're happy to further that conversation. And then I guess the, the final question that I've got um, is, is there anything that communities should be looking out for when they're trying to connect with their states to find new funding opportunities. So uh, specifically, it might be a little bit more difficult for a community that is in a state that lacks a, a centralized broadband office or doesn't have someone who's specifically at the state level who's working on this. Um, what advice would you have kind of for those communities that are looking for, for those, op those options? Yeah, um, we're always happy to have a conversation with the state. Um, we know we have good relationships even with states that don't have a broadband, like a formalized broadband office. Most states have at least a person where it's an other duty as assigned. Um, so we're happy to facilitate a conversation um, and sort of help folk get a lay of the land before they jump in and have that conversation with the state. Um, and I guess to, to finish things off, um, what is your biggest piece of advice for communities that are either looking for new funding opportunities or looking to apply for them? It's a good question. Um, plan, plan, and plan. Um, I, I think you can never do enough planning to make sure you're prepared to jump in. Um, and then we're, we're always here to help. Uh, your state person's always here to help. We're, we're happy to facilitate those conversations um, or, or help how we can. Wonderful. Well, 
Um, I appreciate you being here today, Gilbert. Thank you so much for <laughs> diving into this incredibly complex topic with me. Um, and thank you for sharing everything with, uh, with everyone here. You're very welcome.